Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, I recently had a question come up where a viewer contacted me with a citation in literature asserting that something like the Sonovia mask with the zinc nanotechnology would require light in order to be effective. So I delved into that question and I want to share with you what I found out. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about my channel at large. A lot of you already know that I was just getting my channel started when the pandemic came along. I'm glad that I noticed that there was something that I had to contribute, i.e. masks especially. I felt like those same skills that I devote to all things integrative, health, supplements, modalities, whatnot, I was able to also use in my evaluation of face masks. And I'm really glad that I've been able to contribute in that way and I want to continue doing so. For those of you who are just here for the masks, I get it. I think a lot of my viewers are here for the, about the masks and the pandemic, but I really hope that you'll check out some of my other videos. I am trying to still sprinkle in the content that stays more true to the broader scope of my channel. So I hope that you enjoy that. And if you do like my content, I hope you'll please subscribe and certainly share with people who might find my content helpful, masked pandemic and otherwise. And speaking of which, I'm going to have a video up soon talking about fermentation. I recently did a video where I showed how I make my own homemade yogurt. I was going to put them the other way around, but I thought that the yogurt making demo was a little bit more fun. So soon I'm going to put up the next video in that sort of series, I guess, which is going to just be a deep dive and a talk about fermented foods and probiotic supplements. Yeah, so on to the Synovia. You guys know this has been one of my favorite things since the very beginning of the pandemic when I found them. So a viewer contacted me and sent me a citation. It was a link to an article in a scientific journal stating that the zinc nanotechnology that is in the Synovia mask, and by the way, this was a, an article about lots of different antimicrobial face masks. So the Synovia was just one. And the assertion was that this is reliant upon UV light in order to be effective. So of course that gave me a moment of pause and a big deep breath and I thought, oh my goodness, well let's dive deep into this and figure out what I'm going to have to do. So I immediately contacted Synovia. I sent a link to the citation and I asked to please be put in touch with somebody on the science team. I heard back promptly from Synovia's chief science officer, that would be Liat Goldhammer, and she sent me a very detailed email. I'm going to share the content of that with you. She also sent me citations. Now I already put this information in the Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy Facebook groups page. By the way, if you are interested in joining that group, you can just head on over to Facebook. So for some of you, this might be a bit redundant, but I thought before this grows legs and before this gets out to a wider audience, I just want to say what I found out after reading all of these citations looking at it myself, and I'll tell you about the determination that I made. According to the chief science officer at Synovia Tech, there are several different mechanisms, like I believe six at least, that are responsible for the antimicrobial nature of zinc nanoparticles. Of those six plus mechanisms, one is called ROS formation, reactive oxygen species formation. So perhaps there's a chemical reaction that forms hydrogen peroxide or something like that. Now, some of this is a little bit beyond my pay grade, but suffice it to say, ROS is one mechanism among several that is responsible for the antimicrobial nature of something like a textile using zinc nanotechnology. Well, that's the only one where UV light is a question. So none of the other mechanisms are reliant upon UV light in order to be effective, nor is there any argument about it. Now, back to ROS, reactive oxygen species formation, that is one area where it is possible. Some citations in the literature say that it is required, that UV light is required in order to form the reactive oxygen species and therefore to have that one mechanism of antimicrobial activity. Other studies in the literature say, no, that's not true. So at the very best, that is unsettled. So to put it in other words, in the way I put it in the Facebook group, one of the mechanisms, reactive oxygen species formation, might be dependent on UV light, but that's not settled. Some studies say yes, some studies say no. I will attach the citations down in the description box, both the citations that I got from Liat Goldhammer, the chief science officer at Synovia, and the citation that came from the viewer who brought up the original concern. Now, Synovia also let me know that the products are tested in labs that adhere to international standards, and that in those labs, while there's lighting in the laboratory, of course, on the ceiling, there's lighting, but the 
product, the textile is actually tested while it's inside a container and the container is unlit. So it's like an incubator or an oven. I'm not sure what kind of a vessel it is, but it's an unlit vessel. So I was very satisfied with this response given the citations and the explanations that I received. Now, just for the sake of argument, I did decide to kind of go down this road and think about when and where am I wearing this? I'm really not going out at night these days <laughs> with the pandemic. So I generally am wearing this, like I said, when I'm outdoors in low risk settings, that's when I wear the Synovia by itself. Given that we're into winter time, it's cool out, it's dry out. These days, I think there's much more concern about aerosol formations with COVID. And I've said in another video, and it's beyond the scope of this video, that when I'm in higher risk settings indoors around a lot of people, I still like to wear my Synovia, but I wear it as a topper and it's a layered piece because I don't want to give up polypropylene in a dangerous setting. That's a different story and it's beyond the scope of this video, but suffice it to say, I started thinking about when and where I'm wearing this thing and it's really always daylight. It's almost always when I'm outside. And when I'm indoors, most lighting, like for example, when I went to the hospital to have my Moderna vaccine, that's fluorescent lighting and even fluorescent lighting gives off some UV light. So even if this were an issue, which I don't think it is, I, I think that for the most part, my Synovia when I'm wearing it is subjected to some UV light. Now, one thing I just want to tell you guys about is I really lost sleep over this. This took about maybe 48 hours until I felt like my questions were answered to my satisfaction. But that was a 48 hours where I was like sweating bullets. Okay, first of all, I couldn't stop thinking about how many people had purchased this product based on my wholehearted recommendation. And by the way, it still could happen someday that you know something I've recommended, I come to find out or come to learn more about it and perhaps won't recommend anymore. And maybe that's part of the price of being really cutting edge, but I'm glad it didn't go that way. But I must say that my only consolation in that time was that I was so happy that I have stuck to this principle where I don't do affiliate links with these things that have to do with people's health and well-being and safety. I was just so happy at that moment that I had not engaged in any kind of a commission structure and that I wanted to be completely unbiased. Now, I was getting prepared with a statement with something that I might say both on the Facebook group page and here uh, if I were to no longer recommend this, but I am so happy and relieved that after getting to the bottom of it, I feel that my concerns and my questions have been answered to my satisfaction and I am going to continue to recommend uh, the Sono Mask because I just think it's a great product and my concerns, at least on this issue, have been completely alleviated. Again, I'm going to link all the citations down below in the description box so you can peruse them and please feel free to ask any questions. I have invited the Chief Science Officer of Synovia Tech to put any comments that she saw fit, both in the Facebook group and here on YouTube. And finally, I want to thank everybody who had already responded to this issue in the Facebook group page. So many people responded after I wrote this piece, and you guys were just so kind and so understanding. And people even said, you know, even if it hadn't worked out that way, that would have been fine, Sandy. So I really appreciate that. I go out of my way to make sure that I'm free of bias and that I'm transparent and that the integrity is first. So. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate the understanding and the kind words. I'm happy this worked out the way it did because I'm gonna go on, continue wearing my Sono mask. I love it. And let me know if you guys have any more questions, please put them in the comments section again or in the Facebook group. And if I can't answer them, we'll see if Liat can. And until next time, be well.